Unit 8, Day 2, Parallelograms. A parallelogram is defined as a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So remember, a quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. So here we have PQRS. PQ is parallel to RS, and they're both marked with one arrow. And QR is parallel to PS, and they're both marked with two arrows. So that tells us those are parallel to each other but not parallel to the first set of lines. Um, another thing to notice is the symbol. When you see that symbol with letters after it, it reads parallelogram PQRS. On the next five slides, we're going to be discussing properties of parallelograms. The first four will be biconditionals. Remember, biconditional statements have the statement if and only if, and they mean that the conditional statement and its converse are both true. So all four of these properties will be able to use the property to prove certain things about a parallelogram, or we can use the facts to prove that the actual quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So let's, look, let's take a look at this first one. It says, a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its opposite sides are congruent. So we have opposite sides PQ and RS congruent, and opposite sides QR and PS congruent. So remember, we can either say that's true about the parallelogram, or we can use that to prove something is a parallelogram. The second one states that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its opposite angles are congruent. So angle P is congruent to its opposite angle R, and angle S is congruent to its opposite angle Q. The next one states that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its consecutive angles are supplementary. Remember, consecutive means in a row, so that angle P and the measure of angle Q equals 180, the measure of angle Q and the measure of angle R is 180, the measure of angle R plus the measure of angle S is 180, and lastly, the measure of angle S plus the measure of angle P is 180. This one states that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram if and only if its diagonals bisect each other. So remember, the diagonals are the lines that connect the opposite corners, and then this diagonal PR and the diagonal QS, they intersect each other at this point M. Now what this property states is that point M cuts each diagonal in half. So PM is congruent to MR and SM is congruent to MQ. However, you need to be careful because that doesn't mean that QM, MR, MS, and MP are all congruent. It only states that the diagonals themselves get cut in half, but they're not all the same. This last one is a property. It's not in biconditional form. This one is only used when we're trying to prove that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this one states that if you have one pair of opposite sides of a quadrilateral that are congruent and parallel, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So this one you need to be careful because you only need to have one pair of opposite sides that are both congruent and parallel. If that's the case, then you can say that PQRS is a parallelogram. On this slide, what I want you to do is I want you to pause and I want you to draw all these diagrams. Then, based off of the five properties and the definition of a parallelogram, I want you to determine whether each of these is a parallelogram or not. And if it's not, give your explanation why. So go ahead and pause and when you're ready, you can come back and check your answers with me. Okay, ready? This first one is a parallelogram because of the definition of a parallelogram. Opposite sides are parallel. The second one is a parallelogram because of the property that states opposite sides are congruent. This one is a parallelogram because of the property that states that diagonals bisect each other. This one is a parallelogram because of two properties actually. One that states that opposite angles are congruent and the other that consecutive angles are supplementary. This one is not a parallelogram, so you need to be careful because this one says op this pair of opposite sides is parallel, but this pair of opposite sides are congruent. It doesn't give you enough information, 
So we could actually say NEI, not enough information. This one is a parallelogram because of the last property we talked about. This pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel, which makes it a parallelogram. This diagram says that this pair of opposite sides is parallel, and this pair of opposite sides are congruent. Now, this diagram looks like a parallelogram. However, think back to this one that we talked about. This one also has one pair of opposite sides parallel and one pair of opposite sides congruent. Even though these two diagrams look different, the information that we have is exactly the same. So don't be fooled. This one, again, is not enough information. This next one that we're going to talk about, first we have this pair of angles that are congruent. Now if you remember back to Unit 3 when we talked about parallel lines, the alternate interior angles converse lets us say that those two lines are parallel. Now, if you take a look at these congruent angles, and then if we use the alternate interior angles converse again, we have yet another pair of parallel lines. So by the definition of a parallelogram, we have opposite sides parallel, so it is a parallelogram. This last one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six sides. And we said by definition, a parallelogram is a quadrilateral. So it has to have four sides, but this has six. So this one is definitely not a parallelogram. Now on this page, what we want to do is we want to use this diagram and our knowledge of the properties of parallelograms to complete the statement. So I want you to pause, draw the diagram, and try to complete the statement on your own. Then you can come back, press play, and check your answers with me. Ready? MN is this segment. It's opposite and congruent to PO. ON is this segment, opposite and congruent to MP. PQ is part of that diagonal that gets bisected. So that's going to be congruent to NQ the other half of the diagonal. Angle MQN, MQN is this angle, and that's just going to be congruent to this one, the other vertical angle. Don't forget about those, even though we haven't talked about them in a while. Segment MN is going to be parallel to the opposite side PO. Angle MPO, MPO, that's this one, is going to be congruent to the opposite angle, and we can call that O, angle O, N, M. QM is again this diagonal, or half of the diagonal, which is going to be congruent to the other half that got bisected, QO. And lastly, N, P, O, N, P, O, that's this angle here. Let me use a different color. This angle here, which is going to be congruent to this one the alternate interior angle, angle P, N, M. I hope you got your answers right. On this one, same idea, except this time we're going to use the diagram to actually find the measurements for the sides, segments, and angles. So go ahead, pause, try this on your own, and then check back with me when you're finished. The first one, HI, is opposite and congruent, er, equal to 16. GH is going to be the other half of the diagonal that got bisected, so it's going to equal 8. The measure of angle KIH, KIH is this angle, which is the alternate interior of this one, that's 28 degrees. Then we have the measure of angle KJI, which is this angle, which is opposite and congruent to this one, so it equals 84. KH, this side, opposite and congruent, and it equals 10. HJ is going to be the whole diagonal, which is going to be twice that half part, so 8 times 2 is 16. The measure of angle JIH, so we're talking about this whole angle here. Now that angle plus the consecutive angle here, angle JIH plus the angle 84 
is going to be 180 because they're supplementary. So when you subtract 84, you get the measure of angle JIH is equal to 96 degrees. Okay. Now the measure of HKI. HKI, that's this angle right here. So if we know this angle is 96, then the opposite angle, that one, is 96. So 96 minus this angle we have 28 gives us 68, which is the measure of angle HKI. I hope you got them all right. On this page, we want to know the value of X and Y in order to make the polygon a parallelogram. So when you look at this first one, the sides are labeled with expressions and numbers. So we want to be careful of how we pair them up to, and which one you are solving for first. This side, 3X, is going to be congruent to this side, 6 because opposite sides are congruent. So let's divide by 3, then we get x is equal to 2. Now, we want to take that and set up an equation with the other sides. We have x plus 2 is equal to y minus 1. First, what we're going to do is substitute that 2 in for x, since we solved for that already. Now we want to solve for y. 2 plus 2 is 4, equals y minus 1, Then when you add 1 to both sides, y is equal to 5. With this next one you want to be careful because there are two different properties we can use. Opposite angles being congruent or consecutive angles being supplementary. So take a look at what you have first and try to decide what would be the easiest first equation to solve. I'm going to go with opposite angles being congruent. So we have 2x is equal to 70. So when you divide by 2 you get x is equal to 35. So we solve for the first one. Now you want to look for which angle has y. y is only here. So let's use these two and set up the equation x plus 3y plus 70 equals 180 since consecutive angles are supplementary. Then we want to substitute for x that 35 so that the only variable that we have in our equation is y because you can't solve for 2 at the same time. Now we have 3y plus 105 is equal to 180. Then when you subtract 105 from both sides, we get 3y is equal to 75. Divide both sides by 3, and we get y is equal to 25. Okay. With this last one, we're using the fact that diagonals are bisected. I want you to pause, try this one on your own, solve for x and y, and then when you're finished, you can check back with me and see if you got the right answer. Hopefully, the first equation you set up was that 3x equals 12, and you got x equals 4. Then you used x plus y equals 5y, substituted the 4 in for x, and then got y is equal to 1. If you didn't, make sure you pause, check your work with mine, and see where you might have made a mistake. The last two things that we're going to work on are proofs. Now I know it's been a while since we've worked on a proof and they're not your favorite, so we're just going to kind of ease back into it. So I want you to pause, write this down, try to complete the proof on your own, and then check back with me once you've finished. Hopefully these are the answers you got. Now it's possible you could have switched your statements for 2 and 3 and that's totally fine. Because they have the same reason, it's okay if you switch those two. Now, again, I want you to pause, write this one down, try it on your own, and come back and check. Now, you want to be careful with this one because in 2 and 4, you do have the same reasons again. But you have to be really careful about which set of angles you put in here because of the very next line. In this one, if you're trying to prove that JK is going to be parallel to ML, then we want to prove that these angles are congruent to each other. So this one has to be that one. And then the next one, if you want to prove NJ congruent or parallel to LK, then we have to prove that these angles are congruent. So that has to be there. Now, I didn't tell you this, but the alternate interior angles converse is actually used twice as a reason. Hopefully you picked up on that. And lastly, JKLM is a parallelogram because that's the definition of a parallelogram. Once we've proved opposite, opposite sides are parallel, that's enough to say it's a parallelogram. So that's it. 
I'll see you in class.